Hi everybody, my name is Patrick Blank and I'm the lead level designer here at Runic Games and welcome to part two of our three-part series demonstrating scripting functionality within our editor that we use to create Torchlight. In this video I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can take uh, chunks of geometry within your level and randomize them with other chunks of geometry uh, just to mix it up a bit. So building upon the level we used in the first video I've just gone ahead and modified it a bit I've removed the railings on the left hand side of the outer balcony so that we can expand the level a little bit more and over to the left I've gone ahead and created another smaller balcony which will through the chunks we'll use to connect to the previous so for this video we're going to go ahead and show two options which we can randomize uh, when the level starts you, you can create more if you like um, but for this we're just going to use two over on the left hand side here you'll see in the folders I have one named Variation 1 and another Variation 2. Each of these houses a different set and configuration of geometry which will the game will randomly pick when it's played. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these really quickly. Variation 1 as you can see has a bit of a drop off to a lower balcony which connects between the two structures. And you'll notice at the top of each of these balconies here between the railings there's a gap we're going to go ahead and add uh, bridges on each of these that when the player pulls a lever will extend them um, allowing them to proceed over to the other balcony and that's uh, variation one so let's go ahead and look at the second variation variation two quite a bit different obviously um, it continues along the same balcony at the same height and width and has a completely different set of prop placement and lighting Okay, so let's go ahead and close this and open up Variation 1 again. And let's uh, put these bridges in. So first thing I'm going to do is within the Variation 1 folder, I'm going to add another subfolder. And I'm going to name this Bridges. And then I'm going to right click. I'm going to add what's called a Layout Link Timeline. And this is the same actor from the first video we used to create our trap gate. So I'm going to rename this Bridge 1 and then we're going to go over here to the uh, properties and we're going to navigate to the bridge mesh there we go and I'm going to make sure this is start and load false and we're going to rotate this in place and then I'm simply going to duplicate it and move it over to the other side and then let's rename this bridge to okay now let's add a lever I'm going to zoom in down here and in my bridges folder I'm going to right click and add what's called a unit trigger. I'm going to rename this lever and then over in the properties on the right hand side there's a drop down and let's look for a floor lever right there. Let's go ahead and move this into place and there we go. So let's go ahead and hook all this up in logic. So we come back over to our folder and we're going to add what's called a logic group. And then I'm going to open that up and I'm going to take these actors and drag them into the window. And then I'll bring it back over to the main screen. There we go. So this is our visual scripting space here called the logic editor. And here are our three actors, the lever and the two bridges. So I'm simply going to right click on the lever and do an output of triggered and on each of the bridges I'm going to do an input of play and you can see that it's added these uh, input and output connectors so you simply click on the trigger and drag it to the input to the bridge we'll do that with the second one and they're all set up and they're ready to go so let's go ahead and close that let's collapse this and now we need to make sure both these variations are visible Otherwise, if it picks the one that isn't visible, you won't be able to see it. So we'll turn that visible. And now we need to uh, additionally put both of these in a shared folder. So I'm going to right click and add a group. And I'm going to name this uh, Variation Master. And then I'm going to select both of these Variation 1 and 2 folders and move them within the new folder. So they are now the subfolders. On the main folder that houses those, we need to make sure over here in the properties the random type choice is not set to all. Um, that's what its default setting is. If it's if you leave it at all, then it will spawn both of the options. 
So we're going to change this in the drop down to weight. And you want to leave both of the subfolders to the choice all. Okay, so that's it. This should work. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can see both of these variations in action. So I'm going to use our shortcut. I'm just going to simply hold down control and right click and do start here, uh, which is much easier than the play button, which will start me back at the beginning of the level. So here we are in our level and we got variation one. There's our bridges and here's the levers. So let's go ahead and pull it. And there we go. All right, that worked pretty well. So let's go ahead and hop back out. And let's try this again and see if we can get the other variation. Nope, same one. So let's hop out again and try one more time. And there we go. So we got the uh, variation too. So there you go. You can see it's a random roll, so you never know what you're going to get. Um, you can control that through more detailed scripting, but if you leave it up to the engine, then it'll be random every time, which is really cool. And I think that's a pretty satisfying conclusion to this video. So uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this and found it useful, and thanks for watching. Thanks.